Previously on MasterChef, the home cooks faced a gruesome mystery box challenge. There are children who will not sleep tonight. And season three winner Christine Ha returned with an unseen twist. You're going to be cooking this challenge without sight. Oh my God. Joe and Chrissy went head to head. If you want to talk behind my back, I have the balls to say it up here in front of me. I said I knew it. But ultimately, you didn't believe in what you were doing. It was Beth that said goodbye to the MasterChef kitchen. Now, wedding bells are ringing. If you screw up their food, you screw up their wedding day. With a team challenge that has the contestants catering a reception on this couple's big day. I cannot believe they're trusting us. You guys, come on, move! But the honeymoon ends quickly. Liz, you're wiping the forehead again, and you're wiping the plates. Oh, my God. Sending the losing team... The winner was... ...into a nerve-wracking pressure test, where one more home cook will be sent packing. The time is done. Welcome back, everyone. Allow me to introduce you all to two very amazing, special people. Please welcome Anya and Aaron. This flavor scientist and his foodie fiance have invited MasterChef to be part of the most important day of their lives. You should know who these guys are. Because you're attending their wedding tomorrow. <laughs> and surprise, you will be cooking the food <laughs> at the reception. <laughs> wow. I cannot believe they're trusting us to cook for their wedding. We don't do this stuff. This is an important gig. Why the f are they trusting us? But the bride has a few food rules for the home cooks. So, it's like the wedding vows. No, it's um, the vows are much shorter than this. Well, wow. So uh, that is your list. This is Hold the on. list. These are my dislikes. No peanuts. No beets, no radishes, no celery root, no fennel. Anybody that comes with a little list like that, no this, no that, I'm like, oh boy, here we go. No Indian food. This is not the day to teach me that I will suddenly like Indian food. Eh, Bride, I think she's gonna hate everything we do. No bell peppers of any kind. No dill, no cilantro, no olives. Guess we're gonna be making lettuce wraps and water for this wig. The good news is, <laughs> The teams will be getting a little bit of help tomorrow. I have organized a incredible chef to come in and cook a stunning appetizer. Tomorrow, your wedding is going to be graced by Gray Millet. Yeah. Now, I always think weddings should end on a high, so I reached out and got hold of this extraordinary chef to cook your dessert. And that chef is me. Yeah. <laughs> Graham and I are going to be taking care of two courses and our phenomenal home cooks. The best 12 across America will be in charge of the entree. I'm a little nervous about this one. It's the biggest day of your life. You'll never forget it. And they're foodies. So this is going to be one of the most important parts of their night. You've got your work cut out. Right, let's go. There are very few things that Aaron tells me, mm -hmm. and I was told my hair will be down and curly. I love your hair down. So, so he gets it. He can have it. I'm gonna give him something. That's all he gets. Welcome, everybody. As you all know, today we are responsible for cooking the food for Anya and Aaron's wedding. This is the most important day in Anya and Aaron's life. If you screw up their food, basically, you screw up their wedding day. You'll be serving over 100 guests. Most eat everything. But there are 15 vegetarians. Make sure that there is something delicious to eat for every single guest. You ready to pick the teams? Natasha and James, you had the best issues in the last elimination, so you two are the team captains. Natasha, you've got the red team. James, you've got the blue team. James, you have the first pick. This is a very special day for these two, so whatever we put out has to not only taste great, but be visually gorgeous as well. And I think the person who has the biggest edge over everyone in that will be Lynn. Wow. It's an honor to be first pick, but it's also exponentially puts the weight on my shoulders every time I'm picked first. Nice. Natasha. 
I have not had a chance to work with this person in Anne. I need a co-captain, and that's why I'm going to pick Eddie. Eddie, wow, smart. What an honor. James. Jesse. Wow. Natasha. Jordan, I'm hoping you're not going to disappoint me. And I'm going to go with Big John. Bethy is going to be my, my right-hand wow. woman. James. I'm going to go with Bree. Natasha. I think Savannah is going to be a great attribute to this team. Savannah, please come and join the red team. James, you have the final pick, and this happens to be for both teams. So it's me and Chrissy. I'm pissed because I don't want to be in the bottom. I never want to be the last pick. I don't want to be on James's team. I feel like James is going to lose. I don't think he has that leadership quality. And uh, I have all the faith in the world for Natasha, and she's not even my favorite person. I'm going to go with Luca. OK, mon ami, how do you feel? I was praying to be in the blue team. Why were you praying to be in the blue team? Because I don't think Natasha can be a strong leader, and I think we have all the aces in our team. Wow. I'm offended by what Luca says, but honestly, I think that he's weak, and I honestly think he's a joke. Well, there's going to be a bit of a snag with your perfect unions. Sadly, not every wedding ends in bliss. Sometimes people get jilted at the altar. Natasha and James, you each now have to pick one person from your team who will not be cooking in today's challenge. If you were to lose today, whoever you decide to leave here at the altar will not have to cook in the pressure test. So, Natasha, the pressure is on. Who is the one individual that you're jilting from the red team? They're probably going to get rid of the weakest link, and right now I feel safe. I need a team that's going to pack a punch and really listen and work. Chrissy, you're not going to be playing with us. My, my feet, thank you. <laughs> Natasha underestimated me, but I don't mind the free pass. She just catapulted me to top 11, so... <laughs> Right, James, who is the one person you're jilting? This sucks because I love my team. But there's only one person in the group that is just a hair behind the rest. The point is to be here and to be a leader and to show what you're made of. And I think sitting out would suck. Who is it? Three. Wow. I think it's stupid to get rid of me because why would you get rid of someone who's such a strong vegetarian, you know, when you have to cook vegetarian dishes? But screw you guys. Good luck catering the wedding. Right. Red team, blue team. Let's go. The 103 wedding guests are starting to arrive. They include chefs and foodies with discerning palates. Our 10 home cooks will now head into the kitchen to find out what Graham and Gordon will be serving. This is my appetizer. Spring pea essence with whipped creme fraiche, pink peppercorn, and lavender infusion. Wow. Gordon, what are you making for dessert? Joe, yeah, one of my most popular desserts um, served in all my restaurants around the world. A delicious sticky toffee pudding served with a brown bread ice cream and a really nice caramel sauce. All right, team captains, why don't you guys come up and taste real quick? This is the level of precision execution that we're looking for. And a dish that I think sealed the deal for Graham's second Michelin star. It's almost insane that a pea soup could be that damn good. And the sticky toffee pudding. Wow. I've already had three. It's so sick. The appetizer was so perfect, and the dessert was so insane. It's like we have to find a way to match them. We need to make sure that we have a kick-ass meal. Right. Your two hours starts now. Off you go. Each team will now have just two hours to conceive, prep, and cook an entree for over 100 wedding guests that matches the standard of Gordon and Graham's dishes. James, what about lamb, dude? I'm thinking fish is stronger, though. My only concern about any red meat is by putting that red meat on the plate when we have such a rich dessert. I'm just thinking if we do halibut, we are taking probably the least flavorful protein. That is a good call. For, for the most part, a rack of lamb is easy. Perfect. OK. Blue Team's Captain James has decided on lamb with a parsnip puree for their entree. And for the vegetarian guests, grilled mushrooms over a goat cheese creme fraiche. I look at my team, and it's Jesse and I on a team. And we've never lost a team challenge, ever. 
While the blue team begins prepping their entrees, the red team, led by Natasha, is still trying to figure out what to serve. You guys are 100% wanting to do short ribs. Yeah, I love it. I mean, what do you guys think about like halibut with a miso, beurre blanc? It's not my okay. favorite idea. Natasha is a little overwhelmed right now. I don't think she understands the role of being a captain, and this is a wedding. But we have to perform today. Despite objections from her team, Natasha is going with a halibut beurre blanc, and for their vegetarian dish, an eggplant and tomato stack. Outside, Anya and Aaron's wedding is picture perfect. But the red team's big day is turning ugly. I'm smelling burnt. What is it? Carrots? Oh, she's pissed. Natasha, wakey, wakey! Boom! Please don't stick, please don't stick, please don't stick. Natasha is, is literally doing this dance, wow. like over there. Oh, oh God. Wait, what no. am I doing? She doesn't know her ass from her elbow. Looks like we're heading for a divorce before the wedding. Red team, come here. All of you, look at me. Natasha, are you okay? Because you look a little bit flustered. I, you know, I just need a little bit more support from my team. I feel like you we guys have support. Up enough. What she was saying made no sense because we were all very vocal. But she's not listening. Captain, Natasha, first thing you need to do is refocus and just look at me. Just think logically. Bring your team together, yes, and I want to hear you become a little bit more vocal. Okay, yes, okay yes, you're the captain. Yes, Natasha, are you listening to anything, or are you that arrogant? As the bride and groom share the happiest day of their lives, our home cooks have been presented with the biggest task of this competition so far. Each team is creating the entrees for over 100 wedding guests, and they have to ensure their dishes are up to the same standards as Graham Elliott's phenomenal appetizer and Gordon Ramsay's world-class dessert. While prep for the blue team's lamb dish is going smoothly, Awesome. Hell yeah. Let's keep going. Guys, keep the momentum going, all right? We're, we're getting ahead now. The red team's halibut with baby carrots is not coming together. Uh, she's... The red team looks so fragmented. Natasha is stranded on an island, and her team have completely jumped ship. Maybe we brought them too far. Maybe they're just out of their element. I hope we don't embarrass us tonight. Ready? Too far too soon? I'm worried. Red team, blue team, change gear. Let's go. Graham's appetite hook is going out now, guys. Yes, Chef. We are live. Let's go. How are you guys? Congrats. Mmm. That's so good. Oh, my good. gosh. That is amazing. You guys oh, love it. my word. After savoring the appetizer, the guests' expectations are now extremely high. This is wonderful. This is truly wonderful. It is definitely a tough act to follow. Knowing that they're going to have to follow Graham Elliott's dish and come up with something just as good, you know, there's a lot of foodies in the room, there's a lot of chefs here, and they're going to have to bring it, definitely. The blue team will be serving lamb medallions with a parsnip puree. This meat is going to be done in the next few minutes, and then I'm going to let it rest. While the red team hopes their halibut with roasted baby carrots will be the perfect complement to Graham and Gordon's Michelin star dishes. Red team, blue team, the guests absolutely loved Graham's appetizer. Now match that appetizer with a stunning entree. All right, guys, we got to start hustling here, get stuff all organized, everything ready to go. We're not ready to serve, and we've only got three minutes. Come on, Savannah. Watching you work is just scary. OK, come on, guys. We need to hustle. 30 seconds to go. Come on. Guys, get the plate now. Get the lamb out start slicing it. On the blue team, Lynn, chosen for his presentation skills, is not living up to his reputation. Guys, this play looks like Lynn, I need it now. I need it now, Lynn. I need those dishes for the bride and groom right now. Everyone's just stopped all of a sudden. Guys, move! Sorry, Joe. I know, I've, I've never seen such disorganization. If we can't even do the bride and groom's table. Oh, my God. These are not warm, Natasha. Oh, she's Samantha, I'm going to work on this one, OK? While on the red team, Captain Natasha is trying to do everything herself. Natasha, last time, you have to stop running around like a headless chicken. You position yourself at the table and you expedite. OK. Your team doesn't know what's going next. Stop running around. Control your station. OK. Yes, Chef. Thank you. Okay. Call it away. You guys, vegetarian over here. Fish and the carrots over here, OK? And then we're going to turn around. We need space for this, please. Go, 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 go. Two red. Chef, the red team's ready to go. Is the blue team ready? 
The blue team is ready to go. Please send it. You can send this to the... Uh, to no, the you cannot send this! Oh, my God. Look, dirty plates. Guys, everywhere. get over here. Come here. It looks like it slid off the plates. This is a bride and groom. With the blue team busy replating. Some food. I'm hungry. You look hot. Red team's halibut dish is on its way out to the bride and groom. Woo! Oh, it's the red plates. Oh, uh, okay. Um, I'm gonna wait for the other plate. It would be great if they were both served at the same time. I know, I know. My, my... theory is what was supposed to happen. Hey, blue team, blue team, this is just the bride and groom. And it's taken seven minutes to get four plates out. Get organized. You're all running around like headless chickens. All right, let's go, guys. All right, pick it up. Finally, the blue team's lamb is on its way out to the dining room. So we have, from the blue team, a grilled eye of lamb over a parsnip puree with some spring peas and some grilled wild onions. From the red team, we have a seared halibut with baby roasted carrots and a little bit of salad with pancetta and vinaigrette. Nice. That's beautiful. Bon right. appetit. Enjoy. Thank you. On the red team, Natasha has stepped up and is now leading her team. After these seven guys, you listening? We have three regular, three veggie, OK? So we got That's perfect, three. Natasha. That's what they do. Two vegetarian dishes. 10 seconds. Come on, guys. Blue team, I've got two tables dragging the blue team's entrees. Come on. In danger of losing his first team challenge, Lynn is starting to feel the heat. Hey, sweat box. You're sweating. Look at me. On the food. OK, young man? I know it's hard. You cannot sweat in the food. Yes, chef. No way. No way. You can't sweat in the food. He's sweating on the plates. He's misplating. He's making inconsistent plates. Who's plating that? That's me. I'm plating it. OK, young man. Yes, sir. Are you blind in one eye? No. It's like he almost is deteriorating in a team scenario like this. Four more proteins over here. Table two, no blue plates. Table three, no blue plates. The whole wedding party is going to eat the red team's dishes, and no one's going to even taste the blue team. They're complaining like mad. The blue team are now five tables behind. I don't want to disappoint our team. And having that pressure, it just builds and builds and builds. The stress has got to Lynn, and he's making unforgivable mistakes. Lynn! He's down. Yes, Chef. You're wiping the forehead again, and you're wiping the plates. No, I... I'm concerned about the health and safety. Yes, Chef. I've just watched you wipe your plate with your cloth. Yes, Chef. Now, will you please stop? Forty minutes into service, and the wedding guests are starting to lose their patience with the blue team. Are we going to be served full soon? No, I know. We're, we're very delayed, and um, I'll go back in and check I'll on it. I'll tell you what. If this were a restaurant, I'd have been out of here. Wow. While the red team's plates are pouring out into the dining room, the blue team can't seem to get any dishes out of the kitchen. James, the lamb is cold. The lamb is cold. Get it back. Back in the oven. Get it back. Get it back. Big John's kind of running plates. And I'm like, dude, what, what are you doing? What are you doing? How the hell is the lamb cold? We've had it out of the oven for five minutes, guys. The plates are cold. Come on. Joe, yes. how many tables behind are we, the blue team? The red team has already fed more than half of the dining room. The blue team is just starting on table two. It's a disaster. I don't know how they're going to ever catch up. Graham, can you help expedite, please? Let's go. Let's go. So far behind. Come on, guys. The next pickup is going to be six regulars, six lamb. Make sure you have six plates hot and ready to go. OK, come on, guys. You can pull this off. Cram could not have been more helpful. He immediately reset structure and how things need to go, put everything in the right place, showed us how we were supposed to be operating. You're putting up two veg right now, followed by three. And it was like that. We've caught back up to the red team. Like, we were five tables behind 15, 20 minutes ago, and now we're, like, three plates behind. Guys, come on, guys. Come Come on, we're almost done. Get the sauce on the plate. Thank you. At last, the final plates leave the kitchen for the red and blue teams. We did our best. Yeah, and it looks stunning. Damn, that was intense. That was crazy. I'm very proud of you guys. And while Gordon works on his dessert, Joe goes to see what the bride and groom thought of their entrees. The blue plate was visually more stunning. I think we are in both of these senses. Both in agreement, for sure. But the halibut was superior. You like the halibut yeah. better. It was Cooked great. Perfectly. All the different elements had nice texture, yeah. flavor. All right, I'm going to go find out what some of your guests think. Great. Enjoy. Thank you. I think for me, I'm going to go with the halibut just because my personal preference, but they were both so good. I liked 
Lambetter, which I believe is the blue team. And while the guests didn't enjoy the wait, they all agreed that the food was exceptional and are split down the middle on which team was better. But Gordon has saved the best for last. This is definitely the best dessert I've ever had. This is the best thing we've eaten all night. Gordon wins. <laughs> the judges will now reveal the winning team based on three factors. Ladies and gentlemen, please, your red team and blue team this evening. The guests' opinions, which dish worked better between Graham and Gordon's courses, and the overall service. I want to believe that our team did enough to win tonight. I, our food is just so good. And I'm really hoping that it worked. We all were kind of nervous about this one. It would be really tough to go into a pressure test. I would feel like I definitely disappointed my team, and I don't want to disappoint my team who worked really hard. Thank you guys for cooking a phenomenal meal. It was such a gift to be able to have both be here cooking for us tonight. With that said, there can be only one winner. The winner was... The red team. It feels awesome to win. I finally got a W. I'm definitely back in this competition. Red team, help yourself to a glass of champagne. Nice. Uh, blue team, unfortunately, you will now face the pressure test. I'm just infuriated. I just can't accept that, like, a piece of halibut is better than perfectly cooked lamb loin. Look forward to seeing you back inside the MasterChef kitchen, where at least one of you will be leaving this competition. I don't want to go on the pressure test. I'm terrified of it. Congratulations you. to you both. After winning the team challenge, the home cooks from the red team head inside. Ladies. Safe, sir. safe from elimination. While the blue team awaits the pressure test, where one contestant will be sent home. Did anything go wrong in the kitchen yesterday? Everything was delicious. Everything came together. Only in service. Just service. Only service. This is going to sound terrible, but I'd rather all five of us go in together and compete, because I don't think anyone did a bad job. We earned the pressure test. We messed up that service. And no matter how good our food was, it was on James. He was the expediter. Red team, you won the challenge. So tonight, you are all safe from elimination. Well done. Good job, guys. Bree, you were left jilted at the altar. Yes. So you do not have to compete in tonight's pressure test. Head up to the gallery and join the red team. James, you and the blue team lost the challenge. How do you sum up your team's performance? I think during the prep stage, we had our head in the game, and when it came to service, we collapsed. You were seven tables behind. We waited 20 minutes for pickup as their food went out. Lynn, that vegetarian dish, why does it have to be so overcomplicated? I counted 12 elements to your vegetarian dish, 12. Whether you like it or not, you are about to face a very difficult pressure test. But not all of you are going to have to compete. Joe, Graham, and I, we will each pick one person who will be immune from tonight's pressure test. So, Joe, who do you think deserves to be saved? I'm going to have to reward someone who, comparatively with the rest of you, did a good job. Jesse. Take yourself up onto the balcony. You're safe. Graham, who do you think should be safe from this pressure test? The only person that seemed to really care about the plate that was going out, trying to be vocal, trying to almost step up and fix everything. Luca, go upstairs. You're safe. So, Gordon, which of these do you think deserves to be saved from elimination? 
Lynn, wiping the wedding plates with your sweat. I've never seen anything like that. You are not safe. James and Johnny, between the two of you, there was one that was totally engaged and one that was totally disengaged. The person I'm saving tonight is James. You're safe. Make your way up to the gallery, take your apron off. I'm pissed off. If the team screws up, that does fall to the leader. The two of you are now in a head-to-head -head battle. Think of it as a culinary cage fight. Two cooks enter, one cook leaves. What you will be making today is refined and beautiful. The macaroon. I'm very scared. These cookies are only about like an inch wide, so it shouldn't be anything to be scared of, but I don't feel confident in baking. Light, airy, with just the right amount of crunch. Sandwiched between them, an incredible filling. Most people see me as a carpenter, but baking is something I'm comfortable with. So I'm definitely in my element. I'm ready to go. I'm very excited. It is time for you to head to your stations for the culinary battle of your lives. You two have just 60 minutes to prepare and bake us 12 perfect macaroons with at least two different flavors. Make sure each and every one of them fits inside that box. You have the exact same ingredients at your stations. Almond flour, powdered sugar, eggs, vanilla bean, and sugar. You also have access to a limited pantry where you can find classic and unique flavors to make your macaroons stand out. Clearly, two of you fighting this battle, one of you will be leaving MasterChef. Your time starts now. Lynn is one of the biggest competitors here, and everybody sees him as a front runner, so of course I want Lynn to go home. If I could have it my way today, I want Lynn gone. I want Lynn to go home. I need Lynn to go home. I don't think that Lynn is the best one here. I would rather see Big John go home. He is really good. Big John can surprise you. Making macaroons is chemistry. You have to be exact to the final gram. It's a really tough one. I'd be really, really nervous. That almond powder, the secret there is to blend it so it gets like a fine powder. Then you sieve that, OK, through a very fine sieve, so you haven't got any lumps across the mixture. So therefore, it doesn't go grainy. You want that nice, smooth texture. Big John looks like he's in control. I think Big John's going to take it down. I want Lynn's ass gone for this one, dude. I'm going to do a raspberry with a white chocolate filling, and I'm going to do a plain vanilla with salted caramel. Macaroons are probably the toughest confectionary thing you can do. And, you know, if they don't want to work out today, I go home. I'm going to do uh, peanut butter and jelly macaroons. So one peanut butter and one raspberry jelly, and then you know, eat one of each, and you kind of get the sandwich together. I've made macaroons a couple times, but it, it definitely takes some finesse. I just can't be too rough with it. The box is a very, very challenging part of this pressure test because it is unforgiving. How do you ensure that the macaroon fits in the box? That depends on the thickness of your mixture. Too runny, they go too thin. Too thick, then they go too high. Lynn, looking slightly nervous, yeah. but he looks a lot more composed than Johnny. Johnny's all over the place. Get out of here. Lynn, are you a little late with this batch? Yes, I am. Got to get it in the oven. It's down right now. Do you have 12 white ones that are not correct? 13. You have one to spare. Good luck. All right, Johnny, what do you got going on here? You've got some that are really big. You've got a couple over here that are small. Is this how you wanted them piped out? Yeah, the idea is not to have them all different sizes. Good luck. I hope that they turn out. Thank you, Chef. Oh, boy. How do you I think Lynn looks more composed. Johnny's hands are shaking like Shaking all over. He's got the smallest little end tip of the pastry bag. He's very nervous. 15 minutes to go. Start thinking, execution, presentation. This is intense. 
10 minutes left. Lynn, he's made his slightly too big. There's literally one third of his macaroons that don't fit in the freaking box. What's he going to do? What's he going to do? It's a good question. Macaroons are a little too big. I'm hoping I just have 12 that fit. Nothing I can do. Tough challenge. I think we're both struggling with it right now. Here, the pressure can definitely get the best of people. Johnny and Lynn, you have five minutes to go. Lynn slicing fruit and putting fresh raspberries in his. No. If there's one thing you don't see inside too much the texture, water. Too, too much, much water. water. Yeah, absolutely. He's showing his inexperience. Inexperience, yeah. Now, Johnny's, on the other hand, he used such a tight piping muscle. Each and every macaroon has a little point on there. Uh -huh. The problem is that point might take up so much space in the box that he yeah. won't be able to get all 12, 12 in, in the box. Last two minutes. Please check that you can get 12 inside that box. So Johnny's about to start putting some in this box right now. There's no way he's going to fit 12 in there. They're too fat. So what's he going to do if he can only fit 10? Worst case scenario, he can present 10 in a box and two outside. But that's not what we asked for. I know, but it's better than nothing, isn't it? One minute to go. This is now a race against time. They're both putting their macaroons in the box and seeing if they can fit them. <laughs> it's not going to close. He's a carpenter. He should build himself a bigger box. Oh, oh no. He just jammed them in and slammed the box shut. Last two minutes. Tonight's head-to-head -head pressure test is all about a box of beautiful, delicate macaroons. Please check that you can get 12 inside that box. Johnny's are too thick. There's no way he's going to fit 12 in there. They're too fat. 30 seconds to go. Time's ticking, and I'm just sitting there saying, like, I'm, this isn't going to work, and I'm trying to stack them one way and stack them the other way. I'm going to do that. What's he doing? I'm hoping I can bring two of them up and just put them on the side somewhere. And finally, I just, I, I break. And I just it and just slam the box shut. Oh. Ooh. He just jammed them in and slammed the box shut. I mean, come on, why is he doing this? Why couldn't he serve two on top? How silly. Come on, finishing touches and carefully lift those boxes. Five, four, three, two, one. And hands in the air. Well done. Johnny and Lynn, I've never seen a pressure test so demanding, so difficult. Well done to you both. Lynn, how tough was that pressure test? It's the toughest thing I've ever baked. So you didn't manage 12 in the box? I didn't. Why not? I piped the macaroons way too thick. What's inside the box? Five raspberry macaroons and five vanilla bean macaroons. Visually, yeah, it's got that wow factor, definitely. Beautiful. That's interesting. It's actually a little bit too sweet. I mean, the salted caramel works, but if you're putting that filling in there, then you just pull back three or four grams on the sugar, especially in the meringue, because you've got the sugar syrup. Nice idea, but the golden rule of any macaroon is that you don't put fruit inside. I don't want to negotiate those raspberry seeds on the back of that delicious texture of macaroon. However, on the whole, it was good. Thank you. How are you, Lynn? Chef. You look great inside. Nice, even amount of filling. I like it. I'd say the only thing, it's got that cloying nature with the caramel. What was the idea with the raspberry? I thought if I did a raspberry macaroon with no raspberries in it, it'd just be a pink macaroon with white chocolate. So if I had time to do like a raspberry jam, I would have did that. Having that raspberry jam definitely would have helped it. Something like a raspberry, obviously, is just going to end up with this spongy, dark, wet cookie. But for a home cook, good job. OK, Lynn. But, I mean, they're not perfectly consistent, but they look pretty good. And you put a whole raspberry inside. Uh, I put a sliver of raspberry in there. Right. You've seen that before? I've seen, actually, whole raspberries line bigger macaroons to make kind of a sandwich. Really? 
I never have. That was a bad choice. Tell me about the um, caramel. Uh, it's just a Dulce de Leche. You made the caramel yourself? I didn't make it myself. So you just opened the jar of caramel and added salt to it? Yes, I did. I like the flavor of the cookie itself. It's almost better without the filling. You think you're going home on these macaroons? I hope not. Thank you. Macaroons are just as much about flavor as they are about presentation. I don't know that Lynn was able to pull it off. OK. So tell me the flavors inside that box. There's a chocolate macaroon with a peanut butter mousse, and then there's a vanilla macaroon with a raspberry mascarpone filling. Good. I'm looking at the box, and I'm instantly thinking, this is where Big John goes home. I don't know what happened to Johnny. In the heat of the moment, maybe he just said, forget it. That's what the pressure test does to you. OK. So tell me the flavors inside that box. There's a chocolate macaroon with a peanut butter mousse, and then there's a vanilla macaroon with a raspberry mascarpone filling. Good. My batter was a little thicker consistency than I, than I thought it was going to be, and I, I expected them to settle a little more. So when I baked them, they were, just, they were way too tall to get them in the box. I thought we had to have all 12 in the box, or it was. So did he. I'd rather taste nine delicious macaroons than jamming it in there. You've got the colors right. Looks like the piping nozzle was way too small, so therefore you created too much height as opposed to too much girth. Visually, you got the ratio right. They cut beautifully. See that little lip there? You've got a nice crisp edge and that soft, gooey center. That tastes delicious, chewy, flavorsome, but it's just the end when it was so unnecessary. Is this just like a fit of rage? And you know it's too late once you realize the mistake. I like the cookie and the fact that it's not overly sweet. Mm -hmm. And the flavors are really nice. I just wish that you had shown a little more respect for what they were. Thanks, John. It seems like the judges really are loving the flavors of Johnny's macaroons. So I'm feeling uh, a little nervous and a little worried. Oh, it's kind of a mess, huh? It certainly is. It's good. I think about macaroons, I think about much more delicate flavors. Peanut butter is a little clunky strong, but it's definitely assertive. It covers up the chocolate a bit. This is better than the peanut butter one. What are the differences between being a carpenter and being a baker? Have you ever lost your temper like that on the job? Slam down the wall because you got a level wrong? We've definitely lost our temper at times at that work, of course. I wonder if it was as costly as it might be for you here. Uh, Johnny and Lynn, please give us a minute, would you? Thank you. Lynn's may look great, but hearing the results, they loved the taste of Johnny's. Johnny's had great flavor, but it's like someone's let an hand grenade off inside there. I've never had a macaroon anywhere with slices of fruit inside. It's a gift. They don't eat them straight away. They put them on the side for two, three days down the line. Can you imagine the fruit after that? If it was a jam, I think it would have been balanced a lot better with the white chocolate, because it's really sweet. John's box of macaroons looks like a war zone. There is no way he will win this thing. You pull open that box, and there's like two or three macaroons squashed. But the filling's perfect. I thought the cook on the actual outside cookie was really nice. Johnny and Lynn, first of all, that was a very difficult pressure test. The most difficult 
pressure test we've ever had in this competition so far. One of you staying, and one of you's going. The person leaving MasterChef based on that pressure test. Our decision is... Johnny, you know they are nowhere near the beauty in the box that we were looking for. Lynn, make your way upstairs. Hey, good luck, man. <laughs> Love you, man. Go get it. Johnny, you were taken down with a very difficult pressure test. So you must walk through those doors with your head held high. Good luck. Follow that food dream and continue with that idea of elevating those tailgating parties because you certainly elevated yourself in this competition. Great job. Thank you, Chef. I'm not walking out depressed or sad. What up, big boy? Pleasure meeting you guys. Good luck, big boy. I have a tremendous appreciation for the opportunity I've been given here. <laughs> it's been a great experience. It's been a great ride. It's a 100% yes. <laughs> It's really inspiring. It's just really good. We all really liked it. I never thought I'd make it this far. Now the sky's the limit. See y'all later. Next time on MasterChef, it's an A-list mystery box. Eva Longoria. Oh my God! It was beautiful and tender. Good job. And an elimination oh. challenge. Are we saying goodnight to you? With brutal results. That is the worst dish in four years of MasterChef. With one of the most shocking eliminations of the season. You are not in the top ten. Never saw that one coming. One potato, two potato.